All right, so today we're going to talk about the introduction of integers. So anything that I write down on my piece of paper, you write down on your piece of paper. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers. Integers cannot be decimals. What I want you to do is to create a number line. Just make sure you have arrows on the end, and you can even use one of your lines on your paper to try and keep it straight. Put zero in the middle, and you want to have a positive one to the right, and then a negative one to the left of zero. Positive two, negative two. Positive three, negative three. For every positive whole number, there is a negative whole number. We're going to go to positive 5 and negative 5. So let's go ahead and identify positive integers are greater than 0 or to the right of 0. Now remember, it's just not the numbers 1 to 5. This arrow represents that it keeps going. 6 is a positive integer, 7, 20, 100. Same thing with the negative integers. This number line keeps going. So negative 6 is also a negative integer, negative 18, negative 40. Okay, and how you show that a number is negative is you want to have this minus sign in front of the number. Let's write that down. You show a number as negative with a negative or a minus sign in front. Let's practice identifying our positive and negative integers. So below what I want you to do is create a rectangle. You're going to do this by making it most of the way across your piece of paper. You can use the lines on your paper to help. You want, I wanted at least four lines going down. Make sure you put a line down the middle so you can create two separate boxes. And we're going to identify each of those boxes. The box on the left is going to be negative numbers and the box on the right is going to be positive. Looking at our examples above, if I have a minus 12, that's going to be a negative integer. For the 7, because it doesn't have anything in front of the 7, you're going to assume this is a positive 7. You don't have to put a plus sign in front of the 7 to represent it being positive but you do need the minus sign in front of the 12 to represent that it's negative. Go ahead and pause the video and do the next two integers on your own. Hopefully, for 29, this should be a positive integer because it has no signs in front, and negative 5 should be a negative integer. Okay, so now let's practice identifying if it is an integer or not. Remember, the definition of an integer is that it is positive and negative whole numbers. Integers cannot be a decimal. So I've made a box, a table. The left side of the table shows that yes, they are integers, and the right side shows that no, they are not. Keep in mind, you see you have 15 and then a fraction bar and then 3. This fraction bar also represents division. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. Because this simplifies down to a positive whole number, 15 thirds is an integer. Now let's look at 1 half. Think of this as money. If I have half a dollar, I have 50 cents. It represents 50 cents, so that would be 0 0.50. Well, that is a decimal. So no, one half is not an integer. Go ahead and pause the video and identify whether negative 3 and 4.8 are integers. So negative 3 is an integer because it is a negative whole number. 4.8 is not an integer because it is a decimal. Now let's talk about comparing. 
So the comparing symbols you want to read front to back. So you are going to go almost like you're reading a book. So the greater than symbol is going to look like this with the open end facing. And then the less than symbol is going to look like that. And the equal to symbol is going to be an equal sign. Let's try some examples. Now if it does help for a visual, you can actually use the number line above to solve these problems. So if I'm comparing negative 3 to negative 7, make sure when you draw your box in the middle, you want to make sure it's big enough to where you can fit one of these symbols above in it. So let's look at our number line and find negative 3 and negative 7. So negative 3 is here on the number line, a little bit left of 0. And if I were to keep writing my numbers out, I would have negative 6, then negative 7. So negative 3 compared to negative 7 is greater because negative 3 is closer to those positive integers. Okay, negative 7, the further left you go on the number line, the less you get. So since negative 7 is a little bit further left, it is going to be less. So that makes negative 3 greater than negative 7. Negative 5 compared to negative 5, well, these are the same integers, so they are equal to. Go ahead and pause the video and try the next two examples. Negative 4 is further left on the number line, so it is less than negative 2. And positive 2 is greater than negative 2. Please keep in mind that any positive integer is always going to be greater than any negative integer because they are further right. Now let's talk about ordering. Ordering can be done in descending order, which is going to be greatest to least. One way that I like to remember that is descending starts with the letter D. So does down. So if you're going in descending order, you are starting with your largest number and you are working your way down. Again, we can use our number lines above to help us out. So let's go ahead and put points at negative 5 and 3 on our number lines above. So there's negative 5, positive 3, we have negative 1, and 0. So if you're going greatest to least or descending order, you want to start with your dot that is the furthest right. So in this case, it's 3. So 3 is our greatest number. So I'm going to scroll back down. Okay, so 3 is our greatest number, and then on our number line, we're just going to continue working our way left to get less. So 0 comes next, negative 1 comes after that, and then negative 5. So when I write my answer, I'm going to put 3, 0, negative 1, negative 5. Go ahead and pause the video and try the next example. You should have gotten the order 2, 1, negative 2, negative 3. On a side note, a different ordering direction could also be ascending. Ascending, you are ascending into the air like an airplane. So you start at ground level with your least value and you work your way up to the sky to your greatest value. So if you hear the words descending or ascending, it is just an ordering method. Now let's talk about words that represent negative and positive integers. For negative integers, spend, withdraw, which means take money out of your bank account, 
loss, beneath, or below sea level, these are all negative integers being represented by words. Positive integers, if you receive, deposit, which means to put money into your account, profit, warmer, or above sea level, these are all representing positive integers. Let me give you some examples. If you are six feet below sea level, the integer that is represented by that would be negative six because you are below sea level. The temperature rose seven degrees. Well, if you're rising, you're going up, so this would be a positive seven. Pause the video and try example three. If you owe somebody negative, or if you owe somebody four dollars, you are paying four dollars or losing that money, so that would be negative four. If you have any questions, ask your teacher.